an exercise online that helps people with that. It's called Tammy B. References. It's called the Future Offering Program. So you can go do that. It's very useful. And it's, it's designed precisely to solve that problem. I'll just outline the steps because you don't need the program to do it. You can do it yourself. But it's easier with the program. You can ask yourself a question. Here's the deal. You can have what you need and want, and you can be who you need to be. You can be who you want to be. But you have to figure out what that is. How do you figure that out? You ask yourself. Like, you, like you're asking someone you don't know. And you dream. Daydream like a kid. It's like, okay, here's the deal. Imagine yourself five years down the road. And you can have what you need and want. And you can be who you want to be. What does that look like? And then you have to dream like you do when you're a kid. You have to use your imagination. Okay, well, if I could have what I wanted and need it, I was taking care of myself, what the hell would that look like? And then write it down. Don't get picky and don't get perfectionist. You're not going to get it right in any ways, but you're going to flesh out a vision. And you need a vision. The people perish without a vision. You need a vision. Okay, so now just do that for 15 minutes. Set it aside. Now do the reverse. Imagine that all your stupid bad habits, which you know well, took the upper hand, and you were in whatever sort of hell you could create for yourself in five years. What would that look like? And you want to detail that out. Because then when the temptation comes up, and you're wondering whether or not you should accept it, you can refer to that and think, maybe not there. Maybe I don't want to go there. You know, maybe I want to go to the other place that I detail that. So you need a vision of where you're going, you need a vision of where the hell to stay away from. That's why there's heaven and hell in religious conceptualizations, right? You need something to run away from, and you need something to run towards, and it needs to be particularized for you. You know, you, you're not going to aim at something and then put it to work unless you think it's worthwhile. So what's worthwhile? I don't know. What do you find worthwhile? You know, that's what I'm meditating on. What do I find worthwhile? Now, sometimes people say, well, I don't know what they have to find with while I'm lost. And there's two ways of solving that problem. One would be, well, just watch yourself for a couple of weeks and see what you're doing when you like doing what you're doing. You know, when you find it engrossing. Just pay attention and see when you're more miserable than usual and what we're doing. And see when you're less miserable than usual and what we're doing. And then start doing more of the things that make you less miserable. And I don't mean in a hedonistic way. That just brings misery later. You know, I mean in kind of a mature and attentive way. Okay, so that's, you get to know yourself that way. But here's another approach. And this is in this future offering exercise. Because students and clients used to ask me, well, I, you know, I don't know what to do. What should I do? Do nothing for 30 years while you're figuring out is a very bad answer. So you might say, well, what other people do that seems to work? And if, if you don't know what to do, you should look at what other people are doing that seems to work and do that. Well, what other people do? Well, most people want an intimate relationship. So you might think, well, if I had an intimate relationship, what sort of relationship would I like to have? What would it look like? In detail, who would I be with? How would we treat each other? What would we, we be aiming at? You can detail it out. Most people want to have a family relationship of some sort. If you don't have kids, well, you have parents, likely. If you don't have parents, you've got siblings. Or grandparents, you have family somewhere. You always straighten that out. That worked very nice in the family. Most people want to have friends. You need a job or a career. You need to educate yourself. You need to figure out what to do with your time outside of work that's productive and generous. You need to take care of yourself mentally and physically. You need to adopt a certain amount of civic responsibility. You need to figure out a strategy for avoiding temptation. You know, maybe you like to drink. Well, do you have a plan? You just drink yourself to death? Or are you going to envision how you might handle the fact that you'd like to have a drink now and then? Or whatever your vicious proclivity happens to be. How would you manage that if you could manage it the way you wanted to? Well, that's a way of fleshing out a multi-dimensional vision. We, we gave the university students this program before they went to university. Just fill it up for 90 minutes, which isn't much time to spend.
said, if you find your whole bloody life, 90 minutes, well, people almost never do it. But in the course of their whole life, they never do this once. They were 50% less likely to drop out in the first year. 50%. And their grades went up 35%. And they affect, it affected the worst students most profoundly. It's like, you've got to have a vision, man. And they think, well, what should be in my vision? It's like, whatever would make your life worth living. you got you to figure that out. Or at least make it less like hell. You could start, you could start with that. 